Hello and welcome to my series on demystifying Indian music. My name is Kuljit Bamra and in this episode we'll be looking at some of the problems and limitations associated with the tabla drum in two main categories. Firstly, in its physique and construction and secondly, in the way that it's taught. Now, you may ask, why would I make such a program focused on the problems of something? Well, let me answer that for you. I love the tabla drum and I would like to see more and more people playing it all over the world in different genres of music, not just Bangra, Bollywood or world music. I'd like to see tabla being played in orchestras, in pop music, in schools, in theatres and on all stages around the world. I think that some of the problems that we'll look at today associated with the drum are what prevent it from being used more widely around the world. Do you know it's been over 50 years since the Beatles introduced us to the wonderful magical instruments of India. But let me ask you a question. How much progress has been made since then? How many people do you know play an Indian instrument but aren't necessarily Indian? I would like to see more people play the tabla. And at the moment, it appears to me as though only Indian people play Indian instruments which doesn't seem quite right to me. Okay, let's look very closely at the instrument itself. This is a tabla set. Now, I invite you to watch the episode dedicated to tabla to find out more about tabla and how it sounds. In this episode, we're just looking at the construction of it. So this is what they look like um, when you play them. Uh, there are two drums. Uh, now, how it starts off uh, life. Look, I've got one that I've prepared earlier. Can I just give that to you? Thank you very much. We can move that out of the way. Not to play, just to put here. Just put it down. So here, this is how it starts off life. It starts off life as a, a wooden shell. And these are the chocks that go around it. So what would happen is this, this is made on a lathe. As you can probably see, it's been hand chiselled out inside. Nowadays they lathe it so it's a smoother finish. This is about a hundred years old, this one. And then what would happen is it, you, the, you would get a skin similar to this, uh, which is the head. And this is not going to fit on that, I can tell now anyway, but you'd get a head and then the hardest part would be to actually get some... Just hold that for a second please. Yeah. If you, so you'll get the straps and the straps come like this, it's like 10 meters of strap and as you can probably can tell it's quite stiff and quite springy actually um, and you can imagine how much labor and work it needs to push this through here, I'll try and do one now and then thread it through a hoop at the bottom, it takes a long time and that's what you do with that, with the right hand drum. Similarly, uh, can I just give that to you if you don't mind taking that? Thank you very much. Similarly, with the left hand drum, we'd have an empty shell. If I can find one somewhere, uh, here's one over here. This one's got an ornate design on it. Um, and the me the left hand drum is always made of metal. This this particular one, I think, is uh, aluminium or tin. And um, again, you would have a, a skin that you would put on the top, something like this. Uh, and then you would again put it on top and then ply, thread through the tensioning straps. And then tune it. It's a very, very laborious process. And when I, I've done hundreds of tablets in my lifetime, you end up with blisters. And then the disadvantage, and one of the problems with the tabla, is because there is no standard size, it's very difficult getting one that fits. That's the first problem. Secondly, once you've spent hours and hours putting it on, it's not guaranteed that it will sound good. That's another problem. Now, some people ask me uh, when I travel and perform, is there, do they make ones without skin and of course in this day and age it seems perhaps unnecessary to kill animals to make an instrument 
In the Western world, many drum kits now have synthetic skin and they, they make still a beautiful sound. So one of the questions to ask ourselves is, is it possible to now retire the fact that we're killing animals um, in lieu of uh, producing synthetic fabrics that could work? The other thing also is, where does this skin come from? Yeah, I know it's a goat, but how do I know, was it a diseased goat? How do I know that when I'm touching this skin, I'm not gonna catch an infection? Has it been bacterialized? Has it been disinfected? Has it been cleaned? I don't know the answer to these questions, and whenever I've asked people those questions, they can't answer them for me. I'd be surprised if the answer was yes to all of them. Similarly, if we talk about the wood, that's obviously made from a tree. Forgive me for being uh, patronizing, but is the wood from a sustainable source? We don't know how to answer that question, and I've never found the answer to that question. At some point, these things will retire themselves, I'm sure. Again, the trouble with the tablet, another problem is that because the wood breathes and it changes in size with humidity and dampness, these things eventually warp and they start losing their shape. One of the other limitations of the tabla is that to actually tune the tabla is very tricky. And just before we get into the tuning, I just want to, here's an example that I've got here of, uh, of one that I've, I was going to say one that I prepared earlier, but it's one that I have unprepared earlier. Uh, and this is one that was damaged and it broke and I've just sort of dismantled it and I'm avoiding repairing it because it's so, so much hard work. Let me just show you a skin and just to show you how delicate it is. Let's have a look. There's one tabler here. There's tablers everywhere. Um, this one I bought off eBay in October 2013. <laughs> but anyway, nothing against eBay, but just look how fragile this skin is. I'm not going to apply much energy. That is literally like paper. I know some of you will hate me for doing this, but this skin's gone anyway. But look at that. I'm not, play I'm not playing much force. So these drums are very, very fragile, which poses a big problem for many people. If you were at school and you were a young kid, or a, um, you know, a young person wanting to learn to play the tabla, that wouldn't survive a classroom lesson. Unlike a djembe drum or an African drum, which is a bit more rugged, this wouldn't survive. And also, when you do buy a tabla, for example, you'll get your tabla set, you'll get your... Uh, can I have that one back again, sweetie? So when you buy your tabla, you'll get your tabla set. Thank you very much. And then you most likely would get uh, some covers to protect your tabla. Now, in my opinion, that won't protect your tabla if a microphone fell on it or if you drop something on it. The other thing that comes with your tabla kit are these cushions which stop it from rocking around. Now, if I didn't have that, it'd be very difficult to play because it would rock around. It's got a domed bottom. So we put a, a cushion there and that stabilizes it and you can put the tabla in your preferred position. When you buy a set of tablets, you'll get your tabla, you'll get your cushions, and you'll get a tuning hammer. Now, if you're a young person, or if there's a young person in the house, and they see these two drums and that, what's the first thing they're going to do? <laughs> they're gonna do that, which I'm not gonna do. And then your tabla is destroyed forever. I've seen with my own eyes, school children with tablas and the first thing you do when you see a drum is you want to hit it but you want to hit it with a stick and if you hit that with a stick you have destroyed it within a second because the special paste just flicks off or you've made a hole in it. So in terms of construction there are many issues may I say rather than problems or limitations which which prevent people from really understanding how to look after their drums. I have never in my whole 40 to 50 years of traveling around the world seen a tabla shop that sells you a set of tabla and a bit of paper that says, do not put in the rain, 
do not hit with a stick, do not hit with the hammer, do not expose to humidity, do not sit on them. You just cannot get that. Why is that? So I think these simple things really can be uh, addressed quite easily. Um, we're now at a time where lots of material testing is done and there's massive research on materials. There's no reason why we can't find similar materials without chopping down trees, similar materials without killing animals. And we can still make a beautiful sound with drums that are much more rugged and less hassle to maintain. <laughs>